Pete be low key. He don't ever come in the message room. So I'm gonna say to Pete, "What up, Wody?" And was what Hollywood up, was Hollywood your biggest custom customer? Man, Hollywood was. I can't say he was my biggest customer, but he was one of the closest people, you know, to me. That's for sure. When it comes to like my, you know, my customers, my friends, you know, Cali was up there. I think I th I talked to him at least, you know, every single day of my life since since 1999 probably hmm. and it, it kind of it, it's sad and it hurt that that, that happened to him you know hmm. you know he was a good dude at the end like you know things went south and a lot of things were i was hurt by a lot of things that he did and i'm sure he was hurt by some of the things i did but no matter what i wish he was you know alive today hmm. you know the clue that i had was like my main dudes always there's a couple of dudes that are still out there now but like, Cali and Mike were like one of the dudes that talked to every single day, and we just bullshit it, you know. And you know, we just like had a relationship outside the business, you know. So you know, it's sad that that happened to him, but he wasn't my biggest customer. But he was a man, though. Don't get me wrong. I, I mean, any cool stories? Any cool Cali stories? Oh, uh, Cali was. In a league of his own, mm. he loved you know like letting people know what he had, and he was super fly, bro. That's why we named him Hollywood. And he had it like custom, you know, clothes made, and he didn't want to be like no one else. If someone had a car, he'd you know just like his, he'd sell it, you know. <laughs> I mean, he's super unique about the things he had, you know, and he was deep into the real estate game, like deep, you know. Since maybe before I even started working with him, he already had you know properties everywhere. Right. But I'll tell you this: the first time I meet him, I meet him through one of my associates that end up telling on us, and we meet him at the mall. And I remember I'm gonna sell him four 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 birds, you know, cash. And he pulls up, and he got like a fur coat or something, and his Cartier glasses, and he's in a white Rover. And I bring the bag and he, you know, like, hold on, before I give you the bag, let me check him. And he sits there in the, you know, while we're in the parking lot and he's opening every bird up. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, I don't want to sit here and do this shit, you know? And I was annoyed by him, though. Like, he actually, I actually didn't like him, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, because he was like, man, you, you know, I don't want to fuck up my money with you, you know? <laughs> but... We end up getting super tight, you know, not too long after that. That's a lesson if you know, you could have blown that up that night and been so annoyed that business was yeah. business was affected, but Yeah, I mean, but he was taking care of his business, but just imagine him in his fur coat and glass, like, hold on, hold on, you know? And he's sitting in his rover, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, like he was playing that big part, like to the fullest. And I miss him for sure, man. Salute, salute. Rest in peace, Hollywood. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot There's a lot of stories. Like I said, he one of the dudes who come down to Mexico and see me all the time, you know? And whenever he came, he never came empty-handed. You know, he's the kind of dude you'd be like, hey, what, you know, give me a watch or give me a Rolex, give me a new watch, and he'd come with some custom-ass shit, you know, that nobody else had. Jorge Castillo said, Pete, one thing you can go back and change, what would it be? It's mm. a hard, hard thing to narrow down, huh? To one thing. I mean, there's just so many things. I mean, I... I don't know. I think that when it comes, I, don't, I guess it, it, some of those questions are always come down to something personal, like, you know, um, just being closer to my family or to my dad or like just avoiding, you know, a lot of the dumb shit that I did, you know, I, I can't really bring it down to one thing, man. I wish I could have, you know, save my wife from a lot of the heartache I caused her, you know, that's for sure. Not guilty. Say y'all should have just fled to Dubai or somewhere without extradition. We've had that Everyone conversation. That. Hey, it sounds good to they get your ass back here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And again, I tell everyone my my question was always like, what would you regret if you were sitting in a cell looking at a life sentence? Mm. What would you have done differently? 
And Chad, like I want to tell you, before I got into the game, I didn't have a wife like that. I didn't have kids, you know? Mm-hmm. I didn't give a shit, bro. It felt like that, what you say all the time, like suicide. Like, whatever happens, happens, you know? Yeah. And Reckless abandon. Yeah, you just, what do you got to lose? Nothing. You go to jail, so what? What do you, you don't have nobody, you know. Who am I hurting? You know, who, yeah, who are you hurting? Like, nothing. Nothing's going to, you know. It can't get, it doesn't feel like it get much worse right. until you, you know, start living your life differently and you care about people or you let them into your life and you start having shit, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, half them dudes in prison, you go to prison, they happy, bro. They laughing, they playing basketball. I say all the time, they ain't had shit on the street. So mm. they happy in prison, bro. They right. get to play basketball mm. in prison, do the same shit they were doing at home, you know, on the street. Drink, you know, smoke. To them, like, it's okay, you know? Right. I mean, that's just for, I think that's for goofies when you just sit in prison saying, like, it's a good place to be. Knowing that at the end of the night when they close those doors that you, you want to cry. Mm. You know, get into them 10 years sentences or, you know, and. Or even five years, six years, seven years, and time just going by and life goes on without you. Listen, I promise y'all, get a little bit older. Forget the, the hourglass is broken. Time is just flying. You look, you look at a kid that you love, your kid or whatever, it's it's three years old and you turn around yeah. and look back and the kid's seven and what? The kid knows how to talk and put together thoughts and it's like, wait a minute, where, when did this happen? That's what I'm saying. Shai, I know you don't have kids, but think about when your kids need you, bro. Like, think about them that you bring them into this world and they depend on you to give them a, to be there for them, to provide for them, to protect them, to teach them. And you're not there for that. You know, they suffer. They feel lonely. They, they have, you know, they, they need, they want, they depend on you when they come home from school. They have a problem. They, you know, you're supposed to be teaching them things about life and you're not there. Mm. Now you're hurting them in the long run. Now, because you weren't there, now they on YouTube and shit and TikTok with their fake ass, their pistols and the fucking, you know, clapping pistols together. That's why I tell you, I look at that shit, everybody following a trend of fake gangster, you know, like that shit easy. You pull the trigger, that shit easy, man. That shit don't impress me. Like I seen kids do that shit. Everybody doing the same thing, can't stand on their own two feet. Got a gang of motherfuckers with you, you know? Right. Like. It's just weird to see how fake the shit is, you know? And they ain't even really doing shit, bro. They ain't even about no, you know? And I, I say always... that shit about this, you know, the stuff that comes up all the time about the case shit. Man, the motherfuckers who did that to them are alive, breathing. Mm. You know, miss me with that shit. You want to go after people that, you know, they, they're they easy targets for you, you know? Mm. Man, do something. You know, where the boys at, you know? All the people crying for him saying good dude or this and that, man, get the fuck out of here, you know? Where the dudes that have tattoos of him on, on their chest and shit, you know? What'd they do? Nothing. They take care of his kids? Nope. It's all talk, you know what I mean? That's the kind of boys you want to leave behind, bro? You want to give your life for some dudes to treat you, treat you like that? Just say your name when, when they're on a show or just because it sounds good? If nothing else, this is a stay out the game cautionary tale that needs to be. Hell yeah, it is. I, I'm not saying like, I'm, you know, at the end of the day, I tell you like, man, I, I wasn't like happy about my brother's decisions. I'm going to say that when it came to K, you know, mm. but trust me, man, that man would have done that shit 10 times over. Would have done what? Took your girl in a heartbeat. Mm. <laughs> He would have stepped over you to take your girl <laughs> while you're laying there fucking bleeding out. If that's someone's hero, bro, go ahead, suckers. You know?